This is Trump slam dunk legal path to victory by the numbers. I'm Jerry McLaughlin, and I'm pleased to say that I've consistently maintained that Donald Trump has won the election, and now more than ever. Let me go into details. Trump has clear constitutional legal grounds to be declared that winner. Now listen carefully. Harvard University, not exactly known to be a bastion for conservatism, has a retired law professor that you may know, Alan Dershowitz, who admits that Trump has the winning constitutional legal argument in Pennsylvania, where the courts flagrantly defy the, uh, the rules. I mean, well, what rules? The ones that Pennsylvania legislature put in force, stating unequivocally that no votes were to be counted after Election Day. Now, Dershowitz says that conservative Justice Samuel Alito from the Supreme Court hinted that the Supreme Court would favor, would, would vote in favor, rule in favor of Trump's victory on this. More on Alito in a moment. It gets exciting. So why is Pennsylvania so important? Well, because for one, that state has the largest number of electoral votes out of all the contested races, a whopping 30 percent of those votes. Now, once the Supreme Court has rightfully ruled that Trump has won Pennsylvania, there will be a quantum shift of 40 votes, 20 from Biden and 20 to Trump. So, um, mind you, I'm not acknowledging that Biden, by any means, has ever been ahead. But if you look at Associated Press and virtually every other media outlet under the sun, including Fox News, unfortunately, they falsely reported that Biden has won. So we needed to address that. Yeah, right. I mean, saying Biden won is like looking at a Biden rally and reporting that more people showed up at his rally than the Trump rally. Well, you might say which rally? Any rally. Any Trump rally ever has had more than any Biden rally ever. Remember the Wizard of Oz where the wizard looks so gigantic on the, when he's on a 20-foot tall screen projection there. And uh, once Dorothy's dog Toto pulled back the curtain to what you saw as a wee little man posing to be a giant wizard. But wait, there's more. Another huge winning issue for President Trump is that he's already been determined by the Supreme Court to be well, let, let me just go to basic here. Some of you may not have seen this first video that we did. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, it, it is going to address an issue called equal protection under the law. Now, clearly there's evidence of Biden being given protection under the law that by election results is highly uh, lopsided. In Democrat cities, for instance, like Philadelphia, physically, um, they locked out the, I mean, literally locked out by, you know, lock and key. Republican poll watchers from watching where they're not only locked out, uh, but they couldn't even watch from the window. They even blocked the window. You've probably seen that. Millions of people watch that. Now, this is a slam dunk for uh, Trump because the Supreme Court decision for Trump will be for him since, well, it's not equal protection of the law. I mean, you can see it for yourself. Some people allowed in, the Democrats. Some people are forced outside, the Republicans. But let's go a little deeper to this. Um, it's a vital right for U.S. citizens to enjoy equal protection under the law, not illegal citizens. If you notice in these Democrat areas all over the place, they're giving equal protection for illegal citizens where they don't have to show a driver's license or identification or whatever. Since when do we as a republic, a democratic republic, ever have to show any foreigner, an invader, a squatter, whatever, any protection under the law? Nothing. Just if we want to be courteous to them, if they get hurt, throw them in the hospital, pay their way and send them back to wherever they came from, but we're not obligated to do that. And yet in highly democratic counties where these balances were improperly counted and, and, and uh, I mean, election officials actually notified, this is crazy, election officials actually notified those voters, the Democrats, uh, that their, their ballots were off somehow and said, no, here, here's how you quote unquote cure your ballot. But in the Republican counties, the highly Republican counties, voters were not allowed to cure their ballots. Clearly, this is a flagrant violation of the equal protection under the law. 
Ah, so this is another slam dunk for Trump to win at the Supreme Court level. You see, most of the problems with fixing ballot fraud is where you have Democrat appointed judges <laughs> ruling in favor of the Democrats that appointed them. Does that make sense? So the Democrats who orchestrated their purported ballot fraud are the perps and the judges rule in favor of those perps. Now, once the Supreme Court enters the fray, <laughs> everything changes because the majority of Supreme Court justices are conservative justices. I'm not saying they're pro-Trump. I'm just saying they're conservative constitutional judges. And a conservative constitutional judge is pro-Trump because they're for the issues that Trump stands for. And other ones like Sotomayor and uh, uh, Breyer and, and even um, Kagan, I mean, you don't get much more liberal than that. So the, the conservative Supreme Court justices won't stand for one set of values for the cities that are largely democratic and another one for the suburbs. And there's nothing wrong with that. They shouldn't have a double standard. But wait, there's even more. As I reported in an earlier commentary, the United States Supreme Court Justice John, or the Chief Justice actually, John Roberts, has assigned single justices to individual swing states to make sure that rulings under what is considered to be emergency situations are made with the full power of the Supreme Court. Now, with a limited amount of time for the Electoral College to vote, individual justices literally are carrying the full weight and authority of the United States Supreme Court. Now, this is important. I, I made a video on this earlier, but if you haven't seen it, or uh, I'm going to say it now, and if you have seen it, it bears repeating. Let's go number one, Pennsylvania. Samuel Alito, arch conservative, is assigned to Pennsylvania, who the city fathers there and the electoral judge and stuff like that are saying, they're swearing up and down, there's no way we're going to let Biden lose. They are saying that Biden won, no matter what. Well, the, <laughs> the Supreme Court, when they get involved, will see things differently. And then 20 of those electoral votes from Pennsylvania go to Trump. Clarence Thomas was reassigned to Georgia. Yes, Georgia. So, can't ask for a better scenario there. Clarence Thomas, that's wonderful. We could count on Justice Thomas ruling righteously, correctly in Georgia, not for Trump because he's Trump, but because it's the right ruling. It's a slam dunk for Trump in Georgia and those 16 electoral votes. Now, conservative Brett Kavanaugh was assigned to Michigan where he could be counted on, I think, to rule rightly for those 16 electoral votes. And newcomer Amy Conan uh, Coney Barrett is assigned to Wisconsin, where we also need uh, some justice served there. I mean, there's a lot of purported vote fraud there. And those 10 electoral votes in Wisconsin should be returned to rightful owner, Donald J. Trump. Okay, assuming each of these cases in these swing states are brought before the Supreme Court justices, let's do the math. The simple math shows that Trump picks up 62 electoral votes and he wins decisively 294 to 244. But wait, there's more. <laughs> you might be asking, where do the liberal Supreme Court justices get assigned in this election battle? I'm glad you asked. Ultra liberal Sotomayor is uh, assigned to the states where she could do no harm. New York, Connecticut, Vermont. <laughs> Imagine that. No swing states are in our new jurisdiction. You may be mad at, <laughs> at the Supreme Court um, Justice, Chief Justice uh, Roberts for what he did with Obamacare, but I still think he painted it with a stinky stick and made it a tax, the biggest in world history. So I'm not so sure he sold it as much as conservatives may think so. And similarly on this, he's coming through. It's not coincidental that all of a sudden, wherever we need the votes, there they are. So liberal justice, uh, Stephen Breyer, has been assigned to Massachusetts, for instance. Oh, in New Hampshire and Connecticut and Rhode Island. Oh, boy. Oh, no, we might lose Rhode Island if they have recount. Wait, we already lost it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so anyway, no electoral mischief can occur there. Now, let's bring up the caboose, Elena Kagan. Unfortunately, she oversees Nevada and Arizona, but those states might not even need to be brought forth before the Supreme Court because it's possible Trump to win those states uh, with a combined electoral votes of 16 without Kagan ever visiting it. I mean, let, let's look at it. The Trump campaign lawyers, even as I am speaking right now, are holding public meetings in Phoenix. 
the current spread is this is in Arizona is a mere spread of like three tenths of one percent so if it were to shift one and a half tenths or just call it two tenths of one percent to Trump he gets sufficient additional votes bringing it past the finish line putting Trump at 305 electoral votes to Biden's 233. Hey, why stop there? The last swing state being contested is Nevada, with a jackpot of only six electoral votes, but a, a jackpot either side would like. So, if and when their rampant elect electoral fraud gets rectified, Trump wins the overall kit and caboodle, 311 to 227 electoral votes. Now, isn't that something? When counting the true votes and throwing out the invalid votes, the vote totals are not only inverted with even greater, but, but with greater vote spread than the current phony numbers associated by Associated Press and most of the other reality impaired media outlets, including unfortunately Fox News. We've seen those distorted numbers on TV lots of times. Biden's 306 to Trump's 232. Give me a break. Well, get used to these new numbers. Um, of 300, let's look at them. The new numbers, I don't need this, sweetie. The new numbers are, I had them here. My daughter brought in my cell phone ringing, thought it was important, and probably was. Sorry to whoever that was. Biden's 306 to Trump's 232. Well, that's, you know, what they were saying. But the new numbers are 311 to 227 for the history books a trump landslide and as they say hindsight is always 2020 so let the historians chronicle a vote shift upwards of about 158 with the shift because every time you take away from one side it goes the other side it's like two in the historic shift of about 158 votes in the crazy COVID year of 2020 with hindsight being 2020 <laughs> trump wins big you may be wondering what district John Roberts has assigned to himself. I mean, we've gone through the numbers. It doesn't matter pretty much. But just in case you're wondering, he's overseeing North Carolina. <laughs> so just in case there's any shenanigans pulled later on by Democrats to reopen the can of worms in North Carolina and it's 15 electoral votes, we got more than enough anyway, even if John Roberts were to pull an Obamacare vote ruling. But again, I, I qualify that. I'm not sure it's quite as bad as it sounded. But I don't think he would. I think he'd go anyway. Uh, so anyway, on a somber note, though, the United States Supreme Court has shut down their building to public. I mean, the public is indefinitely locked out of the Supreme Court. I mean, it's OK. It's not like you're monitoring votes there. It's something you're going to be doing remotely because of COVID, supposedly. But what I really think, maybe I'm a cynic. You call me a cynic, but call. I cannot rule out that the high court, <laughs> uh, with all these decisions coming down collectively by the court and some individual by the jurisdictions we discussed, I can't rule out the possibility that they don't really want to see riots in front of their building or in their building worse off by Antifa, anarchists, socialists, communists, you name it. They've seen it in the big cities where they try to burn them down. All Democrat cities, I might add, under Democrat rule for 40, 50 years. But they never mentioned that in the news media. <laughs> they eat their own, don't they? Anyway, if you want to view the Supreme Court notices, uh, you may do so to verify what I'm saying at supremecourt.gov, G-O-V, and um, verify it for yourself. Thank you again for watching. Please share this with a friend or an enemy for that matter. You got to get the truth out there because you're certainly not seeing it in the lame stream media. Once again, I'm Jerry McLaughlin reporting my opinion, and I thank you very much for whatever you could do to share this video. And I'm going to try to figure out how to turn this off now. End meeting for all. How do I do that? There we go. Click end.